The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 18th, the terrific Tuesday edition <coughs> of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie. <coughs> wow. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to <coughs> always remember that Steve's going to start coughing in your ears. It's to always remember that everything in life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call. You can call on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. <clears throat> right now, we got a bit of a mixed bag out there. Dow trading off slightly, 26 points, so basically flat. NASDAQ is not flat. It's down uh, two tenths of a cent, down 43 points. The S&P is flat, for sure. Russell's up two points. Subways are up 53. Trend is up 12. Uh, you've got gold trading out at uh, 2335. That's up six bucks. Silver's flat. It's down nine pennies right now. Trade out at 2929. Lights recruit up a buck at 8132. Natural gas up eight penny nine cents. Trading out at 288. And the 30 year treasury is uh, up nine ticks. Printing out at 119.27. So leading to Clubhouse. Oh, we got that worked in today. Uh, to the upside is Chipotle. It's up 47 bucks. Uh, a little about one and a half percent. Super Micro, 25 bucks, nearly three percent. KLA Corp is up 20 bucks, two percent. Lamb Research, 17 bucks, one percent. ELF Beauty up 12 bucks. That's a six percent move there. To the downside, the Shakers are Broadcom up 39 bucks, two percent. Micro Strategy, 26 bucks, two percent. Martin Marietta, 15 bucks, nearly three percent. Bank of Montreal down 11 bucks, two percent there. Powell Industries off nine. So we've got movers and we've got shakers. But where are we going to begin our day? So let's begin our day by taking a look first. And foremost, there is no new profile that did form inside the ES Mini. I believe during the show yesterday we were taking a look at that. So there are new profiles for the ES Mini. What the ES Mini has done with all the S&P. Well, in fact, we'll go take a look at that. Now, we'll, so we'll stay here right now. So the ES Mini, the key area out here, let's just draw a line across this. Uh, let me get the right uh, line to draw, though. Uh, we'll go with this yellow horizontal line out there. So it's going to be the high of yesterday, which is at 5561. That is a key level, a key threshold level. Why is that, Stevie? Because that is the TD9 count top that took place in the bar following bar number nine. If, for example, the price were to close above that today, 5561, number one, it tells us about a strong upward momentum move. Well, that strong upward momentum move, if we open this up, we'll open up this chart here and we scratch it down just a, a tad, let's just move it down further. What, we, what that would suggest to us, is that price should go target at least the 1 to 1A to B equals CD. That's at 56.78. But do notice that that retracement, that B to C leg, is uh, just a little bit above a 0.382. It's 39.68. When you do a small retracement like that, something much less than a 0.618 retracement, odds would favor that you would do more than a 1 to 1A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. 
And that would suggest maybe a move to 5790. Now, that's only going to come into play if we see a close by 5561. Otherwise, what we should see is we should see price pull back. Pull back to where? Excellent question. Now, you can't see it on this chart, and I don't want to go back and forth because I might forget exactly where I'm at. The first level, and you can write this down in your pad of paper. Well, that's not it. Let me get a different. Oh, I didn't put that up there. Okay, yeah, give me one second to, there we go. The first level to be watching. So when you make a top, it says, okay, I want to go back and test support. We don't know whether it breaks support or not. So the first level of support here is at 54.99. That's the current oscillator and change on. You can see the profile is all the way down here at 54, uh, 54.11. So only that would only be the price target if price were to close below that 54.99 level. That's the current oscillator and change line. So that's what should happen is a retracement back to that level. In the case of the NQ, the NQ is going to go ahead and complete its TD9 count pattern today. So whatever that high ends up being for the day, I can tell you what the present and high is I don't know if that will be the high at the end of today's trading session. It's 22.70.50. Let's assume that is the high of the uh, day out there. What price should do in the NQ is also pull back to its oscillator and change line. That is currently printed 19.804. If price were to close below that, in lieu of any other profiles forming out there, then price's next downside target would be 19.098. To the upside, now the retracement, the B to C leg here, was a 40% retracement. So, again, much less than a 0.618. We're traveling along the left-hand side of that C to D leg. That would suggest more than getting to 2413, more like 2937 out there. But that doesn't come into play unless we get a close above the high of this pattern, which right now is up at the um, 2270 mark, 2270 for the NQ at the moment. If we take a look at what's going on inside the uh, Dow Wicked Future contract, well, this chart here, has, so I've had some real data feed issues with the e-signal this morning, and I can see that the uh, Dow chart wasn't corrected. So we're going to skip over that. Uh, because I've got another Dow chart that we can actually take a look at. In the case of the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 has got several by the D point signals. What I mean by that is there was a hammer candle that formed out here on June 10th. Then there was a hammer candle that formed out here on June 11th. And then we can see that price tested those levels on June 14th. What took place yesterday? A bullish piercing candle. So what we do know here is that buyers are really trying to defend this zone, this area, which is around the 2028 level. Now, what price has been unable to do is really rally too much. And the first level that it needs to close above is going to be 2062.40. Now, you can forget the 40. And then that 2062 may change by a dollar or two. That is the oscillator and change line. If price can get above that, then we ought to see a move up to the 2082 level. That's the bottom of its profile. And, uh, and if it can get above that, then we could be looking at a much further rally inside of the Russell 2000. I'll switch over and go take, oh, let's do this here. Yesterday we were talking about this. We were talking about how the uh, New York Stock Exchange had gotten to uh, a, uh, the uh, oversold condition. Any close below minus 150, and yesterday's close was minus 162. You might say, what is that minus 150, 162? The advanced client oscillator is nothing more than the difference between two exponential moving averages. That's what I'm using here. And those two exponential moving averages are the 19 and the 39. 19 and 39, you might say, why did you just choose 20 and 40? The reason I didn't choose 20 and 40 was because that's not what Peter Harlan came up with. And Peter Harlan used to run the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I'm talking decades ago, and he was the one that really invented exponential moving averages. He didn't call them that. He called it 1% trend, 5% trend, 10% trend, but it really was the exponential moving average. And so that's what Stevie uses, and so we got to that oversold condition yesterday, and that is going to work that condition off, apparently, as we take a look at it now. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. 
While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. I've got the uh, chart up here for the S&P 500 and how it's priced in all of the uh, major currencies out there. And uh, so, you know, we've got this TD9 count top, whether it's in the ES Mini, the S&P 500, the uh, SPY out there, they've all got those TD9 count tops. And is it going to take hold? And I don't know the answer to that question. We're going to find out soon enough. But uh, one of the things going against the grain of saying that that's going to really take hold is the fact that this morning, the S&P 500 so far made a new high in terms of euros. So they're not necessarily sellers out there. We're a new all-time high in terms of yen, new all-time high in, in terms of Great British Pound, Australian dollars. Uh, and we actually, yesterday, let me make sure, see where we ended up today. Yesterday's high was 756.40 inside of the Chinese yuan. So its high was taken out. Yes, it's all-time high. The prior all-time high for the Chinese one was January 4th of 2022. Um, and uh, today, actually, we're even a tad higher than that. And we're new all-time high today in Canadian loonies. So what we need is uh, we need sellers in all those major currencies out there, right? We can't uh, because we're not the only ones here in the U.S. that trade the S&P 500. And so you got those new all-time. Of course, we're very close to a new all-time high. Uh, <coughs> or do we make one today inside the S&P as well in cash? 54. No, we haven't yet today inside of the S&P. So just something to uh, think about. As regard to other things to think about, why don't we go switch over and take a look at a couple of things out here. Oh, maybe a second here. I uh, tell you what, let's do this. We've got call ahead seating. Let's go to our first caller, which is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Steve, I only wish I could get into my favorite uh, high-end restaurant as easily and ask you a question on uh, TFNN. As easily as what? 
as easily as I can uh, uh, oh, speak to I, you I got during it. your uh, show. The call, the call had seating. Well, uh, we're going to have to talk to that restaurant for you. <laughs> there we go. Steve, uh, I wanted to ask you about <clears throat> uh, Agnigo Eco, the minor ticker symbol AEM. Yes. Um, uh, yesterday, Tom O'Brien uh, gave a very thorough of AEM as he saw it. And what I wanted to ask you, uh, of course, into that that top up at 71-ish back on May 20th, the rally from Fed below to May high was over 50%. So it was a big move. We're correcting that now. Could you share with us both weekly and your daily charts where key support uh, marks lie from your work? And if those support marks are broken, what likely happens in, uh, in terms of further um, downside extension? Uh, you you got it. And by the way, you've always got the best table in the house at Stevie's Restaurant. So uh, thanks <laughs> thanks for the call. And now, the, the, the issue with exactly. yeah, so let me ask you. So let me answer your question first, which is uh, where is support as I see it inside of Ignico Eagle for the daily time frame? And I'll give you two levels. The first level. So right now, what price is doing is trading inside its buy zone. And this buy zone is established by its bullish structure daily profile, profile that formed about five days ago. The bottom of that profile, John, is 63.60. The center is 64.77. So that, in essence, is the buy zone. Ordinarily, I would say it closed below 63.60, which suggests that we head to lower price. Can I, I don't have that chart up. Oh, geez, sorry about that. Give me a moment here, and I'll go through that again so everybody can see that. So now we've got the uh, proper charts up on our screen here. And uh, so uh, what I'll first do is let me just move this away. Let me declutter, so to speak. I'll just move these down here. So first we're asking about support. And support is going to be the bottom of that profile. You see that 63.60 in the center, which is at the 64.77 level. See, the top is up 67.12. So we're well below the middle of that uh, profile, and that's a bullish structure. You've got more buyers lined up between 63.60 and 64.77. Uh, However, a couple of days ago, this on the trading session of Friday, what a Nico Eagle did was it generated a bullish hammer candle. And the bottom of that hammer candle is slightly below profile support. So the answer to your question, in my opinion, is going to be 63.43. If price were to close below 63.43, that would suggest lower price. You're asking where is the next lower price target. I would then take a look at the weekly time frame chart. That's the first place I would go, and I can see that it is trading inside a bullish structured profile as well. Now, its bullish structured profile has ultimate support at 61.29, and that, John, would be my answer. 61.29, if price were to close below the daily hammer candle that formed a couple of days ago, and again, that low for that hammer candle is at the price point of uh, 63.43. Now, um, there's A to B equals CD patterns. There's two of them here. Right now, we can see the one that I've got drawn in here is more than a one-to-one. -one. And so that bullish hammer candle that I formed a couple of days ago actually formed a Gartley buy pattern. So in effect right now, inside of AEM, on a daily time frame, we've got a buy signal. And that buy signal would suggest that price should rally up towards the oscillator and change line, currently printed at 66.23 out there. Um, that A to B equals CD pattern could extend itself. So if I get rid of the shorter, the smaller A to B equals CD pattern, what we can do is put up the larger one. And the larger one certainly hasn't been hit. And so that starts with the high out here from the trading session May 21st, takes us down to the low that took place on June the 4th. And then if we put this to the next high that forms <clears> after <throat> that, what we will see is that one to one, John, would get us down towards the 6201 area. So that 6201 could be a price target, 6129. And on the monthly time frame chart, to uh, where's the next level of support, John, that would be at 6105. So does that provide you with the answers that you're looking for? Or what else are you looking at that maybe we can uh, uh, consider? Steve, you've answered my uh, question as posed. I thank you for that. Let me just share two things. One, um, your weekly profile lower boundary, 6130. Yeah. Interestingly enough, that is exactly the same as the FIB 382 support mark. Got it. Got it. So my question, uh, and the second thing is not an observation, just a follow-up question. If 6130 is busted, 
uh, your uh, lower profile boundary and the FIB 382. If that gives way, what's the next level lower as you see it, please? So give me a moment here. I want to make a quick change to this set of charts so that I can answer that question for us because I don't want to just automatically go to the weekly. So I've got my, it should be this signal here. Let's move that to more like three. And uh, so the next level of support on a daily time frame, so we'll stick with the daily right now, will be 6041. And 6041 is the actual TD9 count breakout level. So even if we get below that 6129 level, you still have support at 6040. If you get below 6040, then the next level would be 5402. Now, those would be price targets. Because we're in A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, um, and maybe a new one forms out there, uh, the caveat would be if these areas fail, these levels of support fail, I would be looking at the next bullish reversal candle would be the identifier that is formed in A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside. Um, the, on the weekly time frame, John, that breakout area is down at 41.73, so that's why I hesitated to give you that level. So 60.41 would so be much, that, that next question. You bet. Take care. That was John in Philly. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. 
Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, Light Street Crude. Uh, uh, I had said during the uh, 11 a.m. update, the Light Street Crude was breaking above the prior swing point, and I wasn't certain whether or not there was a uh, TD9 count pattern. And sure enough, we're in bar number eight today. Now, what this signals to us is that we should see some type of at least short-term top inside the Light Street Crude that forms between today, Tuesday, and uh, Thursday of this week. Doesn't guarantee that we're going to get a top out there. It's pretty clear right now, or Light Street Crude would really have to fall off the uh, face of the earth. Actually, all it needs to do is close below about 78 bucks or so tomorrow to negate that call. But it does look like uh, Light Street Crude is going to go ahead and form a TD9 count top. Again, that pattern would complete on uh, Thursday out there. So I wanted to make sure that I covered that for you. And I also mentioned uh, 30-year Treasury, which did yesterday go ahead and form may sell the D point pattern. I don't have the A to B equal CD pattern drawn in here, but you can see yesterday was that bear sash candle. Now, what should take place is we should see price move back to the first level of support. And that first level of support is that oscillator and change line currently printed out at about 180, 118, 29, 11830, right around that level out there. So that's what's going on with the 30 year treasury. And I wanted to at least just simply cover that uh, uh, since I had mentioned that during the show. Um, another question might pop up, which is, and I'm going to switch charts for this, which is, um, uh, you know, it looks like the U.S. dollar index really does want to trade higher. It's just dealing with that resistance of that bearish structured weekly profile. And so a normal question would be, man, after the call with John talking about, you know, is Nico Eagle maybe going to head much lower out there? Or, you know, if it breaks some support levels, where is that likely headed to? And that is, you know, are we worried about, uh, because uh, of the directional tie between the miners and gold, are we really worried about that? Because what we have is everything is moving higher. So this chart here, those vertical lines represent the beginning of a year. So right now you can, and so the, you can see here, I identify from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, do we trade higher? Do we trade lower? Uh, just to be able to take a look at that simple correlation. Right now, up at the top is U.S. dollar index. We're above the uh, high at the, uh, we're above the open, if you will, at the beginning of the year. Same with the S&P 500 and same with Goldilocks out there. So no, they do, they can, and in fact, I expect them to all move in that same direction, especially as things heat up around the globe out there. If they cool off, a different scenario. When was the last time that we had that same scenario where everything was moving, or all three of these were moving in the same direction? That would take us back in the 2018 period. We can go back a couple years before that, the 2016 period out there. Um, see, 2016 was an election year. Does that mean come 2025? That's where we're going to no, It doesn't mean that at all. But it's not unusual. It's, it's infrequent, yes, but it is unusual. No, not necessarily out there. So we can't necessarily let that completely factor into our thinking out there. And I wanted to cover that as well. Now let's go switch back and take a look at uh, some requests that have come in. And we'll start with um, Nicholas, who wanted to take a look at Occidental Petroleum. So let's get to the charts for OXY out here. And Nicholas is looking for an entry for a long position. So when we look at the daily time frame chart, what we'll see is this formed a Roachman indicator top. And what has it done at the bottom? Well, Nicholas, what it did yesterday and the day before was it confirmed a Roachman indicator pattern. You mean it did it twice, Stevie? It did. How did it do that? Well, if we take a look at um, Friday's price action, Friday's price action triggered that Roachman indicator signal. And by day's end, Occidental Petroleum formed a bullish hammer candle. It was a doji and a hammer candle out there. And then yesterday, we had price form the Three River Morning Star. That's a collection, a collection of three uh, candles out here, June 13, June 14, and June 17. So you got a doble gi out there. I don't know what that means, but that's what you've got. And so you've got the bottom. Now, the question becomes, do you wait for some type of retracement? Do you jump on this uh, train out here? Let's look at the weekly time frame chart. Now, the weekly time frame chart, I remember taking a look at this. This is just one heck of a gigantic uh, consolidation, or it has been consolidating for a long period of time. How long is that, Stevie? Well, I'd go back to about the uh, March of 2022 time frame. So that is uh, uh, a couple of years, right? Over two years, Occidental Petroleum has been consolidating. Now, 
You don't have a bottom signal. This top with the TD9 count top back on April the 12th, 2024, uh, we do not have a, we may get a TD9 count, but we don't have a TD9 count bottom. In order for that to take place, what we need to see, Nicholas, is price has got a spike below the June 7th low out there, and that low is at $59 even, Stephen. I don't know whether that's going to happen or not, and especially because we now have a new weekly profile to try to expand this out. So the weekly profile just formed this week, so uh, yesterday, it has support at 59.94. It is bullish in structure. That means that if price were to close above the center, which is at 61.83, we ought to see it move all the way up to the high of that uh, uh, profile, and that's up at the 64.66 area. Now, this new profile has formed, in essence, below the prior profile. In other words, the current high of the profile is less than the prior high. The current low is less than the prior low. So it's telling us about a descending, from a profile standpoint, a descending trend line, so to speak, out there. But nonetheless, and there's no A to B equals CD pattern or anything that I can draw on on the weekly basis, just that you've got this big old-fashioned consolidation with ultimate support if price were to close below the bottom of that profile, which up until, which on Friday we would have said, without uh, the new profile, price is going to go target 5703 or the actual bottom of that consolidation but the daily time frame says well time out i've got that by the d point and what it has today nicholas is a profile change in trend signal so if we open up the daily time frame chart has price been able to close above the top of a profile ever since it formed that high and that high out here uh which really was also a td9 count uh, top as we uh take that back rosemont indicator top out there and the answer is no since that high came in, we have not seen price close above the top of a profile. What this suggests to you and I is this has a real change in trend that is taking place. Now, what price is doing, I don't know that's really an A to B equals CD. I don't think the retracement on this B to C leg was uh, less than 0.786, so I don't think we've got an A to B equals CD pattern. Let's take a look at the swing point. The swing point from June 12th, volume there is 7.4 million shares. We're into it today so far with 4.6 million shares in just over two hours of trading. That says it's moving to that swing point with volume. I uh, should be able to uh, close above that high, that high being 61.26. So if price gets above that high, where is it headed to next? Where it's headed to next would be that oil well, 61.83, and then 62.73, and then 64.66. So now let's go take a look at an intraday chart here for Occidental Petroleum. So it's giving you the buy signal. The question is, at what point in time, assuming that you want to take that long position, which you said you did, do you try to get in? Well, if I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, there is presently a TD9 count top. That formed at 10 o'clock this morning on the open. So from a momentum standpoint, Nicholas, if price were to close above that high, which is 6160, you've got a strong upward momentum move on the 30-minute uh, time frame chart. Its topping signal will have failed. And that could add to the idea of trying to jump on the train out there. Otherwise, what you're looking at, you're looking for a retracement back to support. The first level of support on a 30-minute base is 6076. And below that, it would be at 6052 or 6021. But on the daily time frame, you've got a buy the D point pattern, Roachman to indicator bottom actually is what you've got out there. And on the weekly, you've got a new profile to uh, deal with. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. The next question comes from Fletch inside the Tigers. And let's look at the energy sector. That's the XLE. So, Fletch, uh, we've got the daily time frame up on our screen out here. First, there is a new profile that is formed today. It is bullish in structure. The bottom of that profile is priced at 87.97. The center is at 88.70, and the top is at 90.90. Uh, we have a wave number seven bottom. That is letter G, a very small portion of the uh, Chapman wave. And so it looks like that's going to come to fruition. So it's confirming that bottom today. It also is confirming a buy the D point pattern, at least at this stage of the game. Why? Because a gap up, in this case here, labeled as a rising window on my chart, is a bullish reversal candle. So you've got that going for you. Even if price gets back and it ticks uh, the uh, 88.67 level, which would then negate the uh, gap to the upside, um, we've got that wave number seven bottom. What we could also see out here inside the energy sector is that you've got a bottom. And what price is going to do is going to go test that first level of resistance. Well, in that case here, it's the oscillator and change line. It's done that so far. 89.30 is the oscillator and change line number, Fletch. And you really need to see price close above that. Um, because if it doesn't, we still have a falling price oscillator below, below zero. And those are bearish conditions. You can say, wait a minute, Stevie. You just said it formed a buy the D point pattern. It did. So you'd have those two offsetting signals that would generate a neutral signal. But if you close above that oscillator and change line, then things change. And at least you should get a rally up to the top of its profile out there, up at the 90-90 uh, level. Now, let's go take a look at what's going on in the weekly time frame. But the daily time frame is giving you the buy signal. The weekly time frame, which has a TD9 count top, is traded below, last week closed below, the bottom of its weekly profile. Not a good signal. But if at... Friday's close, the XLE can close above 89.46. You can consider that to be a one-day wonder, one-week wonder, and a false breakdown. If price remains below 89.46, it could be signaling to you and I that price wants to make a move to the 82.41 level. So I'd say it's all going to be about uh, right now. Your daily number, whether it's today, tomorrow, or the next day, is going to certainly be the bottom of the pattern, that wave number seven signal. So if the lows get taken out, that tells us we head lower, which is really what the weekly chart is 
sort of suggesting. But right now we got the bottom signal and price is trying to rally out there. So if price again can close above 89.46. Well, then I would say you get up and that's going to take you pretty close to the 90.90 level. That would be then the next battleground where you'd be looking. You also have a new profile that has formed this month on a on a monthly basis. This month on a monthly basis, and that is 80.98 is support. Uh, 86.98 is the center, and 88.98 is the uh, top of the profile. Right now we're at 88.99. So price is testing the top of that profile uh, on the, and this is a new profile. So even though it's bearish in structure, the typical rules that I uh, share with you aren't in effect at this stage of the game. So that's what's going on, Fletch. We take a look at the XLE. Hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for writing in. God, I hope I was on the right. Yeah, I was on the right side of the chart. It's good. Let's go take a look at uh, Baidu. This is for Alton. And Alton writes in, and um, and he would like to uh, take a look at Baidu. I believe you're looking for a long position here. So as we take a look at it, let's open up this daily chart out there because we're not seeing it as we speak right now. And when I say we're not seeing it, what is it? Well, the first thing that I saw is price was trading below its breakout level, 94.55. The second thing that I noticed is I don't see any kind of TD9 count. We're only in bar number six there. And then the third thing that I'm looking at is all I see is that we are in wave number six. That is letter F out there. So nothing good, at least nothing giving us a signal of a bottom. Now, when we take a look at this data, pretty hard to draw in an A to B equals CD pattern. But I do want to go back to my other charts and just take a quick peek at one thing out there to see if there was enough of a retracement. So this will take me a moment. I wish I could show you this. I could, but then I got to flip back and forth. And we know what happens when Stevie does that. And usually bad things happen, meaning I start talking about a chart and you're looking at something different, and we don't like that. So the only retracement of A to B, nah, there is no A to B equals CD pattern as I see it. The retracement, which I was really looking at, which is between the uh, low here from June 11th to the high on June 13th, uh, amounts to about a 15% retracement. So I would say, and if you're looking for a buy here, the daily time frame says you're in bar number six. So maybe this forms a TD9 count bottom. The last TD9 count bottom that formed out here failed, failed immediately, failed on, it formed, it completed on May 31st, failed the very next day, indicating that we had a strong momentum, moved to the downside. That is certainly the case. Another level for you to be watching, Alton, is going to be that oscillator and change line. Price remained below that level since uh, the trading day of May 17th. So pretty decent amount of time out there. In fact, we could call that a month and a day. So uh, closing above that, that being 93.48 at the moment. This could form a TD9 count bottom, and it could do it between... Seven, eight, nine, Wednesday, Thursday. Could be could be done between tomorrow and Friday of this week. So you want to come back and take a look at that. See if that pattern uh, uh, forms. On a weekly time frame, let's open this chart up here. I don't see anything good here. We're below all kinds of support. We're below the red oscillator and change line. We've taken out a, a wave number seven bottom out there. We don't see any kind of a bottom signal. This suggests that what price wants to do is get back to its swing point from October 28th of 2022. Volume there was 35 million shares. Too soon in the week to know what kind of volume we're dealing with. But last week it was 15 million shares. And again, that swing point, the swing point ranges from 73.58 to 85.56 out there. That becomes the price target on a weekly basis to the downside. On a monthly basis, the monthly chart says, okay, this is where you start wanting to see the weekly and the daily give you some nice bottom signals. Why is that? Because when we close out the month of June, we're going to have a TD9 count bottom pattern. Now, that pattern will not complete until July, so it may be, you know, weeks out before you see any kind of a Baidu bottom. But the first place to start is going to be between um, – did I say Wednesday? I didn't mean Wednesday. Today's going to be bar number six. So Wednesday's seven, Thursday's eight. So it's going to be between uh, Thursday and Monday of next week. So Alton, I hope that helps you out with regard to Baidu. Had a request from A to take a look at ticker symbol ALAR. We look at this, ALAR fell out of bed today, but what it's doing right now, it's testing this breakout level of support. So if it can hold 26 bucks, even Steven out there, then maybe it's found a bottom. And I say maybe because pulling back to a breakout level can be a bottom. No bottom signal or anything. Certainly an A to B equals CD pattern on the downside, but that's such a wide range of bar, you're not going to get a bullish reversal candle. Well, you could get a hammer candle tomorrow, I suppose, uh, but uh, likely uh, – so I, I – 
I won't I won't say anything more than that. Watch twenty six bucks. If price close below twenty six bucks today and twenty six bucks tomorrow, then what ALAR is going to do likely is go test the buy zone of its weekly profile, and the buy zone there is between fifteen ninety six and twenty one twenty one. Not enough data on the uh, monthly chart for me to really take a look at that. So watch twenty six bucks, even Steven out there. That's the key level to watch. S and P inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at four seasons out there. No, actually, I don't know. There's four seasons, but it is F O U R. But four seasons. Hey, you can't beat four seasons. But this is shift four payments out there. So uh, the question is, hi, Steve, we have time for looking for an entry point. Okay, so what this is doing right now, that entry point is not today, at least not at the moment. Why is it not today, Stevie? Because price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 7031. That would suggest that we head lower. Now, the reason I say suggest is because I really mean suggest. When I take a look at the weekly time frame chart, I don't see a topping pattern. The price is pulled back and it's testing its key level of support. And that's the green oscillator and change line. That's at 69.35. We're at 69.24 right now. We'll finish take a look at four for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. We get back from this commercial message. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're still taking a look at ticker symbol F-O-U-R. This is for uh, S&P inside the Tiger's Den. 
So here's what I'm going to suggest, Fletch, because we are trading below the bottom of its daily profile. Um, no action today. Let's see how things unfold tomorrow. If we get a second close below that, um, then that's going to suggest that we head lower. And that next lower spot would be 66.75. Now, you'll see that's a bear structured profile. But because we didn't trade above it for two consecutive sessions, I can't say that that is where a counter trend rally would end. So 66, but I'd still be looking at 66.75 as a potential, and I'd be looking for some type of pattern that's taking place. So I think you just got to stay put for the moment out there. I don't see a pattern associated with suggesting where you would get in at this moment in time. I do hope that that helps you out. Uh, lastly, let's go uh, uh, spend the time, our time taking a look at this. And this being the semiconductor index. So the semiconductor index will go ahead and complete a TD9 count top today. That says today's high, whatever that is. If we close above that tomorrow, strong momentum move to the upside. Now, when we form or we're, or we're about to form a, a top out there, we like to see those tops uh, also signals on some of the intraday charts. It'd be nice if it's on all. Doesn't usually happen that way. And at this stage here for the 195 minute chart, there are two 195 minute bars in a day. No topping signal that I I see at this moment in time, nor do I see one on the 130 minute time frame chart. On the 65 minute time frame chart, you do have a TD9 count top. The high of that pattern is at 57.58.49. We are trading above that as we speak right now. This candle here, this is a 65 minute chart. Let me tell you when that's going to end specifically, which is at 12.45. So just less than an hour from now, if price is trading above that high, 57.58 says that we rally further and then a negate of that topping signal. About the same type of pattern inside the 30 minute chart. The 30 minute chart says a close about 57.56.35 in um, four minutes when they gate that signal out there. All that I'm really saying here, folks, is even though the daily TD9 count top exists, that's going to complete today inside the semiconductor index, the intraday charts are not necessarily supporting that it's forming a top. But maybe we'll have more information at day's end. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll look forward to being back here with you tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp on Wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Hey, and congrats to all those Celtic fans, which basically is the entire Tampa Bay area. Take care, folks. Have a great day.